Alrighty, Sven. Now for exercise number two, we're gonna put on a gate belt on for safety because we're gonna be using our remaining limb and working on some balance stuff. So make sure this is nice and tight. As you can see, this is a little big for you. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do with our remaining limb is we wanna get back to hiking. So we really need to work on our calf muscles because those are really important in hiking. So what we're gonna do is we can use the poles for stability right now, and then we're gonna kind of work into doing it without the poles, but we're gonna go up onto our toe, and we're gonna hold it for three seconds. One, two, three, and then we're gonna go back onto our heel and hold it for three seconds. One, two, three. We wanna make sure this toe is up really, really high, and we're just gonna rock back and forth about 10 times. One, two, three, and back onto our heel. One, two, three, and our toe. One, two, three, and our heel. One, two, three. If that's too hard, we're gonna start by just leaning our whole body over our toe. Good, just until you feel a little bit off balance and hold it for three, five seconds and then back in our heel, just until you feel a little bit off balance. Keeping just that foot flat on the ground. Yep, just working on our weight shifts. And then forward, and then you can work on holding that like 10 to 20 seconds and then start maybe trying to do little baby onto your toes. So under your toes, just a little, little baby before you start working on holding it for three seconds. And then as it gets easier to go up onto your toes and onto your heels, we can hold it for longer amounts of time. And then eventually we can get rid of these holes And I'll be here in case you need it, or you can stand and face your kitchen sink or anything in case you need to um, hold on to anything. So you can just hold on to me. You're gonna go up under your toe. Good, and back under your heel. Good, up under your toe. Great, and back under your heel. Ooh, that's a little bit, but I got it. The last thing to make this a little bit harder, we can start with our sticks, moving into forward, moving forward and thinking about gait and everything. We're gonna work on little baby hops, just jumping off our toe, just in place. Should I, oh, in place, okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start in place. Just little baby hops, woo! Baby hop, baby hop, good. So we wanna work on this before we start to move forward because when we start to walk, as you will see in the next video, this hop is gonna be very, very important. So we're gonna work on our little hops. And once we master this, we can do little baby hops forward. Should I move my poles? You should move your poles before you hop. Okay. Both of them, good. And hop. And you can just hop away. We're just gonna hop right out of here. Okay, Sven, so here we are. We're trying to get you back to hiking, and we want to work on getting that leg moving a little bit, and so we're preventing some contracture motion happening, and we want to make sure that we're not only taking care of the residual limb, but also our remaining limb, which we'll do an exercise for coming up next. So first, I'm going to put this on, just so I can get a hold of you, while we're still working on our balance here. large okay so we do have since we do have our knee joint since you had a transtibial amputation we're going to just start off with we want to make sure that that leg keeps moving so we're going to do some range of motion with our residual limb so we're just going to start off by going forward with our limb good and then we're going to come back all the way with our limb and then we will go out to the side with our limb. Beautiful, how did that feel? All right, so let's keep doing that. Go forward and back and then out to the side. Good, back and out to the side. Then as it gets a little bit easier, we can start to hold it in those motions so we get start to work on some of our strength and endurance as well. Count into about three, one, two, three, 
and then back. One, two, three, and then back. One, two, three. Wonderful. So if that feels a little bit too hard or too easy, there's a couple different things that we can do. So if it feels a little bit too hard, then we can just start off by doing small, easy circles with our leg. So we're still working on our hip motion. We've got that leg moving, exactly what we want. Still working on our balance, making sure everything's kind of continuing to work here. Then once that gets a little bit easier, we can start to move into bigger ranges of motion. Good, watch that pole. It's there to help you. <laughs> nice job, Sven. Then if all of that is way too easy, then something that we can do to make it harder and to progress this exercise further is to mimic our walking and our running motion that we wanna get back to with everyday life and into your hiking as you start to climb again, right? So since we've got that knee joint, then we'll we're, we will be able to mimic going forward and backward like you're revving up an engine Good. This will allow us this will allow us to start to get that motion going and get used to that motion while also working on balance. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, it's a little hard. It does get pretty tough. But that looks great. Great job, Sven. We're gonna be talking now about how you can get around while you are at home in the community, you're going to be sent home with a walker, and this rolling walker, and this is what you're gonna to wanna to use. It's gonna become your best friend while we're getting around just to make sure that you're safe while we're working towards getting you fitted for that prosthetic limb, and when you're not gonna be using those hiking poles or your countertops or things like that for balance help. So we're gonna start talking about how we can learn how to walk correctly with this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that you're remembering that we're gonna take a step forward, not yet, but we're gonna be taking a step forward with that right limb. And we're gonna be moving the walker forward first. Make sure that you have a nice stable base there. And then we're gonna make sure that we hit our right leg heel to toe as we kind of hop forward. Okay, okay? we're gonna to try to land as light as we can. And I'm gonna be right here with you just in case. And we're gonna move forward. Heel to toe. Okay, that was a great start, but what we're gonna do a little bit differently than that is we're really gonna try to focus on hitting our leg heel uh, to toe. Heel to toe. Mm -hmm. okay. Heel strike first and then moving to those toes so that we land softly as we move forward. So walker goes forward and then we go up, heel to toe. Okay, better, let's try it again. We're going heel to toe. Beautiful, Sven, nice work. Heel to toe, and then heel to toe. And that's how we want to do that for walking. Then if we're trying to attempt the stairs. So what we want to do is we're going to put the walker all the way up onto the second stair. Oh, so man. I know, wheels go up onto the second step and the flat part goes off to the bottom step. That way we've got some leverage to help to hoist ourselves up once we're onto the step. So it's the same kind of motion of when we go up that we're landing heel to toe up onto the stair as well. So nice soft landing using that walker for support and we're going up, heel, okay, pretty good. So let's try it one more time. We're going up, that's okay, take your time. Beautiful, all right, you got one more in you? Yeah, and then we're gonna stay right there. Okay. Good. Heel 
tiptoe. And then walker will go all the way down to the ground. Uh, okay. Yep, so you're able to lean and then you come back down. I use my arms a lot on that one. They're helpful, aren't they? They sure are. All right, Spin. The last thing we want to go over is your skincare routine, okay? Okay. So, My skincare routine? Not your face skincare, your residual limb skincare, which is just as important as your face care, okay? Got it. So, we're going to have a quiz at the end. Okay. All right. So, there are these things called the five P's, and they're like these red flags. Like, you should be like, ah, oh, this is bad. I need to see a doctor if these happen to you, okay? Okay. So, first we got pulse. So, the pulse is located behind your knee. Okay, so you want to be checking it every time you check your skincare, just make sure that it's still back there, still flowing. We have pallor, which means like paleness, if it's looking pale or discolored or anything, you want to make sure you get that taken care of right away, okay? We have paresthesia, which is like any kind of unusual numbness and tingling, which you might have some of that because that's normal. That's called like phantom limb sensation or pain, which may happen to you, like the feeling that your leg is still there, but mm -hmm. this is anything abnormal. Okay. We have paralysis, which is if you ever like can't move it or anything, that's really not a good thing and you should go get some help. Got it. And we have some, and we have pain, any kind of abnormal or intense pain that you usually don't have, okay? So what were the five? The five are pain, pallor, paresthesia, paralysis, and pulse. Okay. Behind my knee. <laughs> Good. I'm proud of you. And you're ready to go out into the world, and I hope I wish you nothing but the best, okay? Thank you.